All right, hey, Jeff here. So what I want to do is kind of a follow-up video to my Record Store Day Drop 3 that I did the other day on Record Store Day because basically what I did is I went to Record Store Day, I got what I wanted, I got home, I made the video. I opened them up on there. Now it's been a couple days. I've had a chance to breeze through them all, listen a couple times, digest them a little more. I've watched a bunch of videos from other people, which reminds me just how limited my taste is when it shows all the other things that people were buying that I had no clue what they were. But, um, And so I wanted to kind of share my thoughts on what I did buy. And then I also went back out yesterday, a couple days later, to kind of, you know, the aftermath of what Record Store Day at a store that I didn't actually go to on Record Store Day and kind of want to go through what I, you know, found there. So first off, as I mentioned in my initial video, when I went and looked at the list many, many months ago when they released the list, I knew on Record Store Day Drop 3 there was two things I wanted. Sad Wings of Destiny by Judas Priest and the Alice Cooper Live album. For some reason, that was all that was on my radar. That was on the list that I made months ago. That was what I was thinking I would be getting whenever it did come out. The day before Record Store Day even, I revisited my list and said, do I really want to go down and fight the crowds for those two albums? When chances are they're going to have them after the fact, like they did two, you know, on drop one when I wanted some stuff. But my wife, as I mentioned, talked me into going. So I went. But so in, in preparation that night, I went ahead and looked at the list again two or three times. And that's when I noticed a couple other things that were... Oh, okay, okay. I should probably add that to the list of things to get. So I didn't adjust the list, but I want to go back. So yes, this has been probably one of the highlights of everything I got. I have played this. I have sat down between the speakers and absorbed it with the, you know, the division of instruments and everything. Basically revisited this you know, an album that you don't always listen to. You think of Priest, you go back and you listen to, you know, the Screaming for Vengeance and things like that. Going back and listening to this on vinyl, just sitting there and absorbing it, I was just really blown away and really grown to love this a lot more. It's a great package deal. It looks beautiful. It sounds beautiful. So yeah, this this has still stood out after a few days as being one of my favorite buys. Then the second thing, the second item that I had on my list that I definitely wanted was the Alice Cooper. I threw this on and the first thing that struck me is, you know, because sometimes when you buy these albums that are live shows from the past that were never really ever <laughs> intended to be released or they would have been released back then, you know, you find that a lot of times you might get something that's a little more bootleggy sounding. I mean, obviously, they're going to be better than bootlegger. They wouldn't be releasing them at the way they do. But the thing I noticed about this, and I saw other people on, like, Discogs commenting about it, saying that they were blown away by how it sounded. Based on the recording equipment of the 80s and, and how it probably wasn't a lot of time spent on trying to record it for a live album or whatever. You know, this is kind of like an afterthought. Let's, let's release it, you know, 100 years later. Here we go. But yeah, I noticed that it's just the sound quality I thought was really good for an album that I expected to be, you know, subpar or, you know, a little lower than usual just because of the intent. The time frame at this time frame in Alice Cooper's life, he admits, you know, he was almost unaware that this album of anything around this album, the album recording and all that he was it was a rough time in life. So uh, anyway, I was impressed with the sound. Now, I have seen some other people who have criticized the energy and you know it just didn't seem like it was a great show i didn't get that far into criticizing it. i thought it sounded great and i enjoyed it i enjoyed hearing something live from this era which is an era that i had kind of not been into alice cooper in these days in the 80s it wasn't until he really started making the comeback that i tuned back in with the material he was releasing so i like this i i enjoyed this now this is one that i added the night before and i'm glad i did UFO. The pros, I love having the whole show. This is great. The only thing I noticed, and you're going to notice this, is there are times during a performance where the vocalists' vocals sound a little, you know, pitchy, as they would say on American Idol. Anyway, I it's, it's raw and it's great and I loved it. It sounds great. This, even though it was almost a last minute decision because I somehow didn't see it initially months ago, this has jumped up as just an exciting purchase that I made 
And again, I feel kind of bad about this because I did get this, but again, it was one of the last minute decisions. I kind of missed out on the uh, Skid Row era of that time frame. As I mentioned before, I was kind of not listening to this music in the late 80s through the mid 90s. So this era, I caught up with Skid Row many years later, way after their heyday. And I love the first and the second album, and I love this album. That's why I did buy it. I am glad that I made the decision at the last moment to grab one of these. And yes, as everybody says, it, it is a great package. And I got the last one at our store, and I'm just thrilled to have one. So yeah, it's this is a great package deal. Now, I was totally unaware. This is where we go with the follow-up. So I went back to the store, a different store, last night on a different part of town. And I knew I was going there because I knew somebody who wanted a UFO album and the Cinderella album. Now, I was totally somehow missed the boat on knowing that Cinderella... Uh, had been released. It wasn't a Record Store Day release, but it came out on Record Store Day. It wasn't advertised at our store. They weren't displayed in the Record Store Day section, etc. So I said, well, I'm going to go check a different record store on the other side of town. And I went in there and I immediately went to the Record Store Day leftovers and, you know, with no UFO. So then I went over to the actual regular records, which is uh, the non-record store day section their regular stuff because i figured that's where i'm going to find cinderella if i find it at all and i was, was excited to find not only one but i did find two so i did get one for the friend um and i got one for myself so this is the cinderella you know i'm glad that i found two and got them it's on this neat clear looking thing so yes and so i'm going through there and i'm looking and i grabbed this now on Record Store Day, on the first drop, that's the one where I didn't go partake in the festivities of going in line and choosing and all that stuff. I showed up about an hour after all of that was over and they opened it to the public. But I was still able to get what I wanted at that point. I picked up everything. The one album that I kind of hemmed and hawed about and then chose not to get was the Fight album. I went home. I started hearing how people were having a hard time finding it. I had a friend that mentioned how they couldn't find it anywhere and they really wanted one. And I thought, well, they had a, a couple of them at my store. So my wife's like, well, let's go back. Let me take you back. Let's go get them and get one for your friend. And I'm like, okay. So we jumped back in the car. And I was back at that store probably an hour after I had just left with the purchases that I did make. All of them were gone. They said, yeah, we just sold the last one. And they had at least two or three so i'm like okay whatever that's it's not a big deal i missed that on the first fight album it, i was again they were in that time frame where i wasn't really paying attention to that type of band and so it wasn't a huge loss but then as you hear about it and people having it and people having a hard time getting it you start regretting that you had it in your hands and you should have bought it well on that day when i went back to that store and they didn't have any more i picked up the phone and called the store that i went to yesterday Hey, do you have the fight album? And they're like, what? Which one? The fight, you know, uh, Small Daily Space, fight, Rob Halford's band. No. If we do, we don't have any left. We're sold out. I'm like, okay. So that was two drops ago. That was two months ago. Never really gave it much more thought. So I'm in there yesterday flipping and I'm flipping right there in the regular section. They had two record store day sections, one for Saturday and one for previous record store days that was left over from like the previous month or so. This was in the regular stock. And I'm like, there it is. I had called them about this and they didn't supposedly have it, but there it is. Wait, there it is again. Two of them. Uh, okay. So I went ahead and I did grab them both. Because I've heard of people having a hard time getting this. So I do have a second copy. I'm not going to, you know, gouge the price and flip it for any price. You know, I'm looking to most likely sell it for what I paid for to somebody who can't find a copy. I'm not sure how much of a demand there is for this. It, it's whether or not people are really still looking for it or not. So if I don't find somebody that just needs it that I can sell it to at cost, then I, I may give it away. I may have a contest or something. So if you're interested, you know, in something like that, let me know. If there's much interest in somebody having a contest for something like this, then I might go that route. I don't know. Point is, I went ahead and rescued it just because I'm sure somebody somewhere may need that. And then I'm looking through the regular stock and I run across this. 
Now, I bought one of these. I showed it in a previous video. I bought one of these on Amazon for like $10, and it had a big pop in it and sounded horrible. And I sent it back. And since then, I haven't been able to see one online for... They, they jumped back up in price. Found this one in the record store there, you know, brand new, for $25. I thought, let me grab that. They also had the new reissue of Empire double disc set. But, again, since I bought all this other stuff, and that was like... $45 I'm like I'm not ready to buy that right now so I got me one of these I get up and I'm checking out and they've done this to me one other time before the guy at the counter is like okay when I'm done he's like go over there and he points to one specific rack go over there and pick an album out for free you know because I guess you buy a lot they they do that for you now my problem was I've been watching I have an app that tracks you know where my wife and kids are and i knew my wife was picking up my daughter when they were coming back to get me i'm looking at the app and i'm i'm looking through the store and then i notice on the app hey they're leaving the school so they're going to be here in like five minutes ten minutes so i go check out then he tells me that and i'm like uh okay so i rush over there to the section and i'm just flipping it's, they're not in any kind of order it's just a bunch of random albums but an album came up that literally has been there since the first time I ever went to this record store three years ago. It's been on my radar. It's just not a high enough thing to where I ever, every time I go there, I don't remember to go buy it. Or I just am thinking I'll get it later. I totally had forgot about it. So last night I'm flipping and boom, I find it. Eric Steele. Now, I don't know. I have a digital copy of this. I This is an 80s band. The album, aside from being a cutout here... I noticed when I looked at it before, the album is like mint. So I was like, yes, I'll take this. And I grabbed this. They were selling it for like $8. So I'm like, hey, a free $8 record. I'm like, yes, I want this. And I go and throw it on the counter. And, you know, he looks at it and says, yeah, this is in great condition. Fine. He says, but I told you to get two. My wife is now out front. I'm making eye contact with her. <laughs> They're out front waiting for me. And I'm like, I got to go find two. So I grabbed this. I went back. I kind of gave my wife the, hold on a second. And I went back and started flipping and flipping and flipping and oh, a monkey's album. Oh, well, maybe and I lay this aside and flip them just because now I'm looking at stuff that's just like, what would I like to have that is not a high thing? Blah, blah, blah. I flipped this. I picked up some Nazareth a while back, so I kind of started to dig them. I grabbed this and started looking and I pulled it out. And by this time, the guy's there looking with me. And he's like, you know, make sure that the album's the right album and blah, blah, blah. I pull it out and it's in not great condition. It's, it's rough. I would probably never have bought it period it's rough it's got scuffs on it it's got fingerprints it's got dirt i'm like yeah no and i laid it back to the side i said that one's too rough i don't want that so he picked it up and said and let me take a look he pulls that and he says yeah that is pretty rough he says i'm gonna throw it on your pile you can have it pick another one <laughs> so now i'm like oh again i'm flipping my wife's looking i'm still kind of hope maybe there's a monkey's album here just looking for anything that would be worth having and I'm looking really fast. And I'm almost at the point where I'm about to give up and just, you know, grab something. And I find this, Gamelon. I was like, yes. This is one of my favorite jazz, I guess you call them jazz, fusion. They're a little more electric than most people would think for jazz. But I had these albums back when they came out in the 80s. I have them on CD now. There's two main albums that they've done. And this one, an aerial view, that I still to this day, two of my all-time favorite jazz albums, uh, I classify them as jazz. You know, they would be called more jazz rock fusion. Love this. And so I grabbed that. So I felt very satisfied. Yes, I grabbed, you know, this third one. And if I could find the other one, I will. And he says, I think we might have that around here somewhere. And I said, well, I'll come back and look when I have more time because my wife is giving me the evil eye that she's waiting at the curb. So I grabbed this. So basically, the, you know, these are used albums they had in the $8 bin. So I got three $8 albums on top of, you know, for free on top of all the stuff that I did buy. Only other thing that I went to recently was right after record store day, we went to another part of town and they went to the store that sells used records. Everything there's like $4. And I grabbed a couple things. Nothing, you know, if you... If you buy three, they're four dollars, and um, nothing major. Want to breeze through these real quick? I got another Partridge Family album. Funny thing was, this was one of the ones I could have got free at the record store last night because I'm flipping, and there it was, and I'm like, oh, I just bought this the other day. But yes, anyway, I had bought this. I love the Partridge Family in that time frame. I have, I think, I need one or two other ones on vinyl, 
and I've got them all. So this was one of them that I needed, so I grabbed it. This I had no clue about aside from the name ELP, Emerson Lake and Palmer. I, I've listened to minor's amount, minor amount of ELP over the years. I know their stuff, know nothing about this album, saw it, thought I'd grab it. And turns out it's way different than anything. It's very, it's all, each, each side of the album is like each guy doing different types of music. Uh, at first, I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. And I listened to the entire thing. The first side is each one of the guys has, you know, different things. So you got one side that's almost like all orchestrated piano classical music, and it was great. And then you got one side that's very soundtracky. Sounds like a soundtrack, and that was great. You got one that's, you know, drum heavy, of course. All of it, was, and then, you know, some of it's got singing, and it's kind of like singer-songwriter, and it's got some rock, and it's got some funk and stuff in there. I listened to all of it, and I'm like, you know, it's different. It's not rock. It's not hard rock. It's not like ELP. It's not any of that kind of stuff that they've, you know, they're known for. But it was very enjoyable if you are acceptable of orchestration, classical feel, soundtrack type classical feel. It was good. I'm going to be uh, enjoying this. I'm glad I have this. Anyway, that is it. That's longer than I wanted to go, but that's my follow-up and my second day going out for Record Store Day releases to see what I could find. Thanks for watching. Rock on.